speak to a human element first before we do anything. I spoke to this young man's mother uh, just an hour ago. Uh, flew in here from out of town. I want everybody to understand the pain, the suffering of a mother. Um, very tough. And I told her, as, as we stand with any victim of violence or any homicide victim, their family, uh, we stand with them in, in this city and this police department and everybody that's standing behind me. I want to thank our homicide unit under the uh, direction of uh, Commander Spears for doing great work time and time again. Um, I'm going to speak briefly, and I'm going to turn it over to the investigator, uh, investigator, uh, homicide investigator Arrington. Um, after he speaks, I'm going to uh, get Commander uh, Garcia to come up and uh, translate in Spanish, but and he'll go over um, some of the investigative parts. But let me speak to this uh, just right. Uh, we understand and we know it. Last this morning at about approximately 2:34 a.m., officers received a call of a shooting in progress. Officers arrived there shortly thereafter. The location is in the downtown location. Billiards uh, Bowling Alley, located at 1201 San Jacinto Street, uh, here in the downtown area. Once officers arrived, uh, they came upon a, a male who was deceased. Uh, that male has been identified as Kersnick Ball, better known as Takeoff. And he's a, a member of the Migos uh, rap group out of Atlanta. And I want to pause again because sometimes the hip-hop community gets a bad name. And I know, and evident from this city and people who I have a personal relationship, a lot of great people in our hip-hop community, and I respect them. But back to take off. I got many calls from Houston and outside of Houston, and everyone spoke of what a great young man this is, how peaceful he is. What a great artist. And I'm calling up on everybody, our hip-hop artists in Houston and around the nation. We got to police ourselves. It is so many talented individuals, men and women, in that community who, again, I love and I respect. And we all need to stand together and make sure nobody tears down that industry. And I'm calling to start here in Houston, uh, here and possibly as early as next week. I want to meet with some of our artists and see how we can taper things down. Um, right now, I'm going to turn it over to um, the investigator, and, and we'll, we'll uh, our commander translate, and uh, the mayor is here for questions as well. But I want to pray for, uh, ask that we all pray for his mother his family, and all of his friends who are in deep pain and shock still right now. Um, thank you. Investigator, come on up. Thank you. thank you again, Chief, and thank you all for coming here, um, and good afternoon. I'm Sergeant uh, Michael Arrington. I'm a sergeant with the Houston Police Department's Homicide Division. And um, Earlier this morning, uh, as he said, our patrol officers received a call at approximately 2.34 a.m. of a shooting just occurred at the 810 Billiard Factory and, I'm sorry, Billiard and um, uh, Bowling Alley. From there, we were notified that there was a single male who was shot and pronounced deceased on the scene on the third level outside, just outside the front door. Um, we were also informed that two other individuals um, had reported themselves uh, by personal uh, vehicle to area local area hospitals uh, on their own, both of them with non-life-threatening injuries, but a 23-year-old male and a 24-year-old female. Um, like I said, both of them are going to be okay, um, and we have spoken and gotten information from them to help us in this investigation. But the officers arriving on the scene, initial statements from employees working at the uh, 
establishment notified us that there was an incident that occurred after the party had ended. There was a private uh, party that was booked out for the uh, event. And then after that ended, uh, there was a large group of people who gathered at the front door area just outside of the uh, building. And uh, it led to an argument where the shooting took place uh, from the disagreement. A lot of the people that were there fled the scene um, and did not stick around to give a statement. So we're asking them to either call us at the Homicide Division at 713-308-3600 uh, or if they would like to remain anonymous, they can call Crime Stoppers at 713-222-TIPS. We're looking for any information at this time, any videos, uh, any, any information. Uh, we do know that the media has received a lot of phone calls, uh, text messages, Twitter, tweets, vines, videos. Um, we need all of y'all to send those to us so we can solve this case. Um, we're looking for anything to help us. From there, um, as the chief said, we want to find justice for this family. Uh, they're going through a lot right now, and uh, the only thing that we can do is hope that y'all reach out and assist us in any way to lead to evidence that will help us to apprehend and get charges and arrest on the person responsible for the death of takeoff. Thank you. Let me say something right quick, just a follow-up. Um, I just want to say something to uh, our city, it's Houston, and every brother and sister in the neighborhoods, I'm calling you to action to step up. There were 40 people at least at, at, at this event, and people left possibly out of fear. So I ask you one thing, and I want this to res resonate with everybody. What if it was your brother? What if it was your son? You would want somebody to step up. So please step up, get the information to us so we can bring some closure um, to this family who's hurting uh, right now. Commander, come up to translate for us. Thank you. Muy buenas tardes a todos ustedes. Antes que nada, le queremos dar el sincero pésame a la familia de la víctima. A nombre del jefe y del alcalde, les mandamos nuestras oraciones a los seres queridos de esta víctima, que ha sido identificada como Karshnik Ball. Tenía el apodo de Takeoff. El jefe de la policía hace unos minutos habló con la mamá de este individuo. Eh, le dio su más sincero, pes sin más sincero pésame en persona y también le dijo la mamá cómo era una persona de paz. Y toda la información que hemos obtenido hasta este momento indica lo mismo de que este individuo era una persona tranquila, que no era violenta y que simplemente estaba en ese lugar donde había una reunión privada. El lugar de los hechos fue en el 1201 de la calle San Jacinto. El lugar se llama 810 Billiards and Bowling, que en español es billares y boliche, en el tercer piso, aproximadamente a las 2.34 de, la, de esta mañana, sucedieron los hechos. Al terminar el evento privado, salieron del lugar y afuera de las puertas de este negocio fue cuando hubo alguna disputa, una discusión. Alguien produjo una, una pistola y fue baleado esta víctima. Dos personas adicionales también sufrieron heridas. Están en un hospital local y van a sobrevivir sus heridas. De nuevo, a nombre del alcalde y a nombre del jefe de la policía, le hacemos un llamado a la comunidad no nada más a la comunidad musical de hip hop, pero a toda la comunidad de que lleguemos al final del uso de la violencia con armas de fuego. Un, una, un llamado para que entre todos se resuelva esta, este caso y le demos justicia a la familia. Una vez más, si había 40 personas mínimo en el lugar, si alguien huyó del lugar por temor, les pedimos, por favor, comuníquense con la División de Homicidios al 713-308-3600. Y si quieren permanecer anónimos, 
háblenle al 713-222 TIPS, t i p s Chief, you want to open up a question? Yeah. Chief, yeah. Just, uh, just a note before I'm turning back over to Chief, Chief Fenner. Uh, as you have heard, this was a private, a private party uh, uh, last night of about 40 people. Um, in that group, um, somebody or people know who the actual shooter shooters were. Um, and let me just ask, like has already been asked, uh, that anyone who has information on the shooter shooters uh, to provide that information to HPD uh, and let us solve this situation. Let us let us uh, bring justice to to this family. Uh, but I'm asking for any of the persons who were at this private party um, that know uh, that have information on the shooter shooters. Uh, please provide that information to HPD. And let us solve it. We will. We will solve this uh, particular uh, case. Uh, we will find the shooter shooters. Um, but information provided will help to expedite that. Uh, but we will. I do want to extend my condolences uh, to the mom of Takeoff, to all the family members of Takeoff, to the families and friends. So I, I do want to. I, I want to do that. Because it doesn't matter uh, how famous you are, you may not be famous at all. Uh, anybody who loses his or her life is a life loss. And there are family members and friends who are grieving as a result. What I've consistently said over the last several months is that I'm concerned with this age group, this young group between 16 and 24, let's say 16, 24, 16, and 30. Uh, there, there are too many. Uh, young men of color uh, that are killing young men of color. And we need, do need to have that conversation. We do need to deal with it head on. Um, this was a private party, private event coming at the end, and then we have the shooting, and now one person is no longer with us. Um, and it's not just in the hip hop community. Um, and I just don't want to demonize this group, uh, but it's across the board with this uh, with this demographic, uh, where people are no longer resolving their disputes or their arguments uh, through a fist fight. Uh, but now everybody has access to guns, and so when there's a disagreement, people pull their guns and they start shooting, uh, and then someone or people are fatally shot and killed, or people are are, are injured. Uh, and that's unfortunate. In my day, you have a disagreement, fist fight, and you deal with it. In this day, if there's a disagreement, in those few seconds when the emotions are running high, uh, people pull their guns and then they're shooting. And as a consequence of that, uh, we have too many young men of color that are being injured or fatally killed, and their future is cut off and family members and friends are left to mourn. Um, this does not have to be our, our reality, and it need not be our future. And so as it relates to this particular incident, uh, what I would say to the people in this city and even beyond, um, we will solve this crime. Let us solve this crime. Let us bring uh, the persons of persons to justice, and we will, uh, and then we will continue to move to make our city a safer city. It's disappointing you know, after putting in place one safe Houston, which is still in place, when the numbers are trending in the right direction, when homicides in the city of Houston are below, 11% below last year, when the numbers of violent crime in almost every category uh, are down in comparison to last year. But one, one incident, one loss of life through shooting uh, is one too many, irrespective of the numbers trending in the right direction. So uh, we'll re I just wanted to let people know uh, this, this, this particular crime will be resolved and, and it will be addressed. But if you have any information for those in the hip hop community, to those who were there last night, uh, please, please provide that information to HPD and then let us work to quickly uh, resolve it. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, go ahead. Uh, there are some speculation on social media that takeoff may not have been the 
may not have been involved in the beef of whatever went down. Is there any indication that he may, was caught in some sort of crossfire, or even perhaps shot by a associate of his? I don't want to speculate, but I do want to uh, say, uh, based on what people say about him, he's well respected, nonviolent. I would not expect him to be involved, okay? But I do want to wait in, uh, on the investigation. But we have no reason to believe that he was involved in anything uh, criminal at the time, just as people describe him, a very peaceful, loving, great entertainer. Was there a dice game going on when this happened? Is that the, the root of the altercation? That's still part of the investigation. I, I don't want to speculate on that. I want to determine that, and uh, we're still on the early stages. It's only happened an hour, a few hours ago, I meant to say. So, go ahead. At least two, at least two right now, and, and with the, the processing of the scene, and, and you know, uh, we, we trace uh, casing, so, um, you know, we're in the process of doing that. So it sounds as though the suspect or suspects were at this private party? We believe so. Yeah. Go ahead. Outside or inside? Outside. And Chief, you mentioned that you don't believe that Tate Cobb was involved in the altercation. Um, are you confident in saying that you don't believe Tate Cobb? may have been the intended target here. I'm not comfortable in saying that I don't want to speculate, not at this time. Go ahead. But um, based on the comments of, you know, young men killing black men, uh, do you think this individual is a young, the, the suspect might be younger than, let's say, 20? I think they were probably all in, in their, their 20s, okay? But again, I don't like speculation. Uh, we, we want to wait until we nail it down. Uh, what we go, I, I want us to all understand the family is hurting, and I don't mind the questions. I mean, that's a part of it. But if we send our family, our loved ones, who are looking and listening on a roller coaster, that's what I always caution against as the police chief. I want to make sure that we're taking them into consideration. But we are going to, bottom line, mark my word and mark it, this great city with all great citizens, with our police department, we will find who's responsible for it. Go ahead. I don't, I don't want to judge them at this moment right now. Um, I, I want to call them to action. And the mayor said, and this is very important, and I don't want my message to get twisted up either because sometimes people take a portion of what you say and they take away from the context of, of the message that you're trying to bring. It's not just hip-hop. It is that age, and we need to give them some help. Um, we've done a lot of things in our city. We need to cultivate them, be there and support them, now, there's a few in any population or any community that are just evil, and that's a very few. And I don't know the backgrounds of these people. Let us find out who did it. Let us do our investigation. But those individuals that I talked about that are committing crime after crime, don't know if this is the case here, but we do have some two, at least two individuals pulling triggers around here. We're going to get them in custody, okay? Chief, I know you mentioned that. Let me get her, and then I'll come back. I want to get, and then we'll, if we got time, we'll get back. As yes. Right now, no suspects, no one detained. Can you, any idea? I know there's some surveillance footage out there. We're we're we're, we're viewing it as part of the investigation, and, and that may uncover something. But uh, the best thing that we have, because even if we have a face, the best thing somebody can stand up because somebody knows exactly who it was, and I'm really confident that somebody's going to step up. Anybody over here, and then I'll come back to you. Go ahead. And then I'll come back to you. Go ahead. Did the argument start at the party, or was it an argument or a disagreement that had? You know, That's still part of the investigation. At some point, I think that was a disagreement or, or, on something, and we're still trying to determine that and work that out. But again, once we determine it, we'll, we'll, we'll put it out there. Okay, go ahead, sir. Uh, Chief, is there anything you can share with us about the uh, private party? I, I don't know uh, right now. Just the private party at that location. Uh, it's going to be part of the investigation. We need to talk to management. Uh, we need to talk to individuals who were actually there. Uh, a, a lot to go in this investigation still early on. Go ahead, Sinji. Um, could you just talk a little bit about you know, where this fits in the sort of broader picture of what Houston's been dealing with for the last couple of years, right? I mean, the mayor did mention crime. I, I don't think it's, Sinji, it's just Houston. 
I, I think it's society. And, I, and I, I've said this probably a thousand times, you know, um, over the last um, year and a half or so. Nobody knows, okay, this thing with COVID, criminologists are going to be studying this here for years, well, you know. Me, so let me, go ahead, Mayor. Let me address that because I want to make yeah. it very clear that this is not a Houston unique mm -hmm. situation. And I know all this year and all these months people have been trying to make this a Houston unique situation. Just this morning, I'm looking at all the crime stats of all of the major cities, okay? Houston is not the worst city. Far from, okay? Every city in this country is facing issues. But the good news in this city, what I can say, is that we are trending in the right direction. We have 46 fewer homicides this year than we had last year. If it was 46 more than last year, you'd be hearing about that. And you would be reporting on that. But no one is reporting that we have 46 fewer homicides this year than the same time last year. Homicides never percent to be low where we were last year. But I will say this, this was not an incident that happened at an, just like in an open club where people can come in and come out and nobody knows our, everybody. This was a private event. And based on the investigation of about 40 people, it is important for the hip-hop community, for everybody else, for this city, for the family. Mm -hmm. It is important for, for those who have information on who the shooter shooters were to make that information known. There's a responsibility and accountability on all of us to do that. And that's why I want to deal with the subject matter, that there are too many, too many young men of color that are being, lives are being cut, cut, cut short from other young men of color. And that has to stop because that's tragic. And so I want to, I want to again, to plead to, to the persons who were there who have information on who these shooters were. Give HPD law enforcement that information so we can solve this situation sooner rather than later. So see, you don't have others out there trying to solve it for themselves, okay? We owe that to Takeoff's mom and to the family. And I want the mother to know and the family members to know that this city is praying for them and we value their family member's life, okay? And we intend to solve it. And that's why we are standing here. We intend to solve it, okay? Because these type of shootings just can't happen, and then we move on to the next one. Thanks, Mayor. Chief. I'm going to take a couple of more. Uh, somebody who hadn't asked a question yet. Uh, Chief. Go ahead. Uh, was his uncle Quavo there when the shooting occurred, and is he working with investigators? Um, I'm not sure exactly who was there. We're going to determine that. Um, I, I don't. Um, I don't say that anybody hadn't been working with us. Um, it's just. It's just happened. Two a. Two thirty a.m. this morning. So uh, we expect family members and everybody to work with us, and we'll get with you on that. Who was it? Juan. Juan? Go ahead. The two people who were injured were they shot also, and were they friends of take take up? Or we don't know the relationship right now. We just know that they're they're in the hospital. Um, I think our investigators had an opportunity to briefly talk with them. Uh, but um, they're being tended to, so uh, we'll, we'll get back at them maybe later on in the day or tomorrow. But so, were they shot? Yeah. They yes, shot yes, them? yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Chief, I wanted to go back to something you mentioned earlier. Outside of the blanket call for evidence and people to come forward, as kind of we're used to hearing, I felt like you had a moment there where it almost felt personal here. And I'm just curious for everyone to hear one more time. For the dozens of witnesses who saw this play out, mm -hmm. what is your message to them? You ask for my person, and I don't like to put it on Troy Fenner, you know, but I'm proud of my city. I love this city. I love this department. And I know the heart of our people. I spent the majority of 55 uh, years in, in this city, and I know what we're about. Um, so um, that's what I'm, I'm trying to wake up. And, and, and if I got to do that and call in people, that's what I want to do. And, and it is personal. But it's not only personal for this incident, 
anybody that's killed in our city, like our mayor has said time and time again, you take it personal. And I don't know how a chief of police don't take it personal. Now, it may, <laughs> I don't have any gray houses and bald headed, okay? It, it may do that to me. May that add a little bit of stress, but you know what? I don't know how police chiefs in our nation don't care. And I can tell you most of them care as much as I care. But I got a lot of strong men and women on our team. And we're, we're going to get justice for this family. And for the witnesses who saw this play out, what would you ask them? Just step on the car and thinking, hmm, what's going on in here? We, we want to put it in perspective. Uh, crimes can happen anywhere. But don't, don't forget, don't forget, uh, private event. And I'm not trying to diminish it. In any, it's a private event. It's not a random just out on, on the street. So I want people to, to understand that. Got a great city with a lot of great people. And we're going to be fine here. But we got work to do. And I'm going to take two more because all my investigators are behind me and they got to get back, okay? I'm going to get you and then I'm going to come back at you, okay? It's all right? Yes, ma'am. Did the party end at 2.30 or was this group outside for quite some time? I'm not sure on, on that. Um, I, I hope uh, events are, are ending at least at 2 a.m. Uh, that's part of the investigation, but I know the shooting did occur outside. Uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Chief, at this time, do you guys know how many times Akoff was shot? I don't know right now. Um, and unfortunately, uh, he, he has to. The autopsy will take place, and, and I don't know, probably sometime tomorrow. They'll get that information to us again. I don't want to speculate. But, uh, again, in closing, pray for that family. Uh, pray for everybody involved. Uh, his, his mom. I don't know her, but uh, my heart goes out to her, and, and people don't understand the human element. And that's what we want these young men to think about. Stop just pulling the darn trigger. Think and calm yourself down a little bit, you know. But that's what we got to work on as a society. So thank you all. All right. Thank you.